In Sub-Saharan Africa today, over 71% of the rural population lacks access to electricity and rely heavily on firewood as a source of energy. Uganda, located in the eastern region of Africa, uses over 80% wood fuels to meet its energy demands. According to World Energy Outlook, only 17% of the rural population is connected to the national power grid, which is largely unreliable and impacts heavily on teaching and learning through disruption of the programs, such as on use of computer-aided lessons and lack of study time after dark. With support from Brussels Capital Region and Enabel, the Belgian Development Agency, communities across the country are now adopting alternative and sustainable sources of energy to meet their basic education needs while conserving the environment. The renewable energy intervention is implemented in seven vocational training institutions and four national teachers' colleges. We have installed four biogas systems, three briquette plants, nine solar water heater systems, 42 energy-saving stoves, four gas ovens, 28 solar compound lights, and one solar water pump in the partner institutes and colleges. Enable install the biogas first in NTC Kavare which is allocated at the farm uh, with the, the digester of 1,000 cubic meters. We get five, uh, one wheelbarrow of cow dung. Then we put it in the mixing chamber. We put there five jerry cans of water. Mm. We mix it thoroughly, manually, until, until it is watery. Then it goes to, you know, to the digester. Then we also put there another wheelbarrow, two wheelbarrows of cow dung and 10 jerry cans of water per day. So it produces enough gas for, for almost two to three days. When I'm instructing or lecturing, it becomes easier to take my class to that vicinity and tell them this is how it should be done. Other than going away, and postponing the next lesson for training. The agriculture students are also getting a good experience. I guess like in secondary schools, they could have not had that experience of seeing how the biogas is made. But right now they are practically involved in that process. A number of these institutions are connected to the national grid. And we know in this country, the the reliability of the power is a challenge and also comes at a reasonable cost, a very high cost. And in many of these institutions now are not seeing a reduction in the bill they have to attend to because of these other uh, interventions as they come to, to fruit. As an alternative source of fuel, the project supports the colleges to produce briquettes, which are a combination of coal dust and other biomass materials like sawdust or wood chips. This provides a more stable temperature for a long period of time compared to charcoal. Cooking has been made easy. Mm -hmm. can put a, a cook can put there around three to five briquettes. She goes to do other things. He comes, he comes back and finds that when the food is ready. If you had entered our kitchen before 2019, and then you enter the kitchen now, and you make a comparison. Even by just looking at the, the roof, you would see a lot of food then. But right now, it is clean. Because even the briquettes themselves, the fact that uh, the, the, the raw materials must be dry and then they are compressed. You, you find that the, the, the soot that comes has actually been really reduced. And of course for the gas, it is soot free. There are five in the, 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 the food tastes nice, smells nice and so it's a really good thing. We introduced uh, energy saving stoves. The energy saving stoves also are facilitated by uh, solar powered hot water systems. We introduced uh, briquette plants to be able to make briquettes that are used in the kitchens. They are also supported by biogas systems. So it's, it's kind of like an interplay of different things. I think among the biggest benefit which we have received after installing these biogas and the energy saving stoves, it is controlling diseases in the college and making our, our cooks very smart 
making our food very smart, our kitchen, the cooking area very smart. The solar lighting system which was put on the streets and the homes of residences, it has improved the security, first of all, of the, you know, at the college, in the compound, and two, it has created a conducive environment even for the students to do self-study. Being able to have good lighting and creating an environment that is safe for learning, where students are confident enough to enjoy their education spaces was really good. So with the introduction of these solar security lights around the campus, it's helping us so much. We get light even where it's these other lights can't access. Formerly, before like these lights, they were introduced in our compound. We could have challenges on having like night shifts. But now, students feel free, both males, females, disabled or not, to, to, to ride very well, to come to the lecture rooms, even at night, even if you have a morning prep, they feel free because they are seeing everywhere. The NEBO has a very strong focus on the climate agenda and um, following uh, our international conference in 2017, we were able to uh, come up with a, a document that we call the manifesto. Uh, the manifesto is basically a documentation of the good practices in line with the climate responsive design. So as a neighbor, when we treat the, uh, the first, we treat the end user institution as an ecosystem, we tend and we make sure we work with the environment as opposed to against the environment. The school management, the estate teams and the cooks were involved in the processes right from the start. They saw what was happening, they were involved in the installations, they were engaged in why they need these things and how they would benefit from them uh, in the future. So they were expectant right from the start and they were engaged. We also um, ensured to have a behavior change training because we realized that um, some of these uh, people are stuck to a certain way of working. Just to give an example, maybe some feel, felt the biogas was not a clean source of energy, but being able to change their mindset to allow them to understand how clean this energy is and the benefits that come with it was very helpful. A cook would work for one full year. The following year, he or she would not work because of the smoke. Now, now how cooks are working throughout to. Over two years minus getting a rest. We are now exposed to different things. I come here to study national building, national certificate in building, but I go with other experiences to secure the environment, to even prevent the pollution. If you looked at our graph or regard, with regard to enrollment, we've been able to shift from 350 in 2018 to 540 as of by the time we broke off for the lockdown, that was in May, implying that there has been a steady increase in enrollment. The facilities have you know, improved on also on our expenditure, first of all in terms of human resource, because now where we needed, uh, where we needed say four people, to, you know, on the cooking stove because of the magnitude of the work, we now we now we have reduced you know the the, the human resources to two, and uh, also the cost of firewood has reduced tremendously. Like now, you know, we use it how to use two rollies per week, but when we you know we started using these renewable energy facilities, the firewood has reduced to one rolly every month we are saving close to 2.8 million. In terms of the human resource, in terms of the time, and in terms of the, the, the cost of the fuel.